Hi, this is Lisa from Farmhouse on Boone, and today I want to show you how I'm going to make a slip cover for this wingback chair. I'm starting with some bleach drop cloth, which I show by video and blog post how to bleach drop cloth for this. I also have another video of me slip covering a wingback chair. The quality, it's a little bit old. First, I just wanna to explain to you how this works. When I slip cover a wingback chair, there's no real formula to it as far as step one, step two, step three. Instead, what I'm doing is I am First, loosely cutting pieces to kind of just start. So I'm gonna set pieces, you know, on all the spots where I can see that there's a panel. So I'm going to be using the chair as my guide this entire time. So I'm gonna set a little piece here where I can see that there's a little panel here. I'm gonna set a piece here, a big piece here, a big piece here, and I'm gonna use the chair as my guide, and I'm just gonna start fitting pieces together to fit it. So I probably will do this differently this time than I even did on the last video because I'm not following any step-by-step -step tutorial. I am simply using this chair as my guide to make a cover for it. So I'm going to put piping in all the places that there already is piping. I am going to put my seams in all the places where there's currently seams. The only place I'm gonna do a little improvising is I'm gonna add a ruffle to the bottom like I did with my other chair. Other than that, I am literally gonna follow the pattern of this chair. See, there's a seam here. So I'm gonna run this inside arm piece around and I'm gonna stop it here, just like the original chair manufacturer did. I'm gonna have a piece here that's gonna follow this. And I'm just gonna watch all the seams of this chair and I'm gonna copy it. I've already pre-made a bunch of piping, which I have a video tutorial on how to do that. I will link all these other tutorials in the description. And then I have my bleach drop cloth and I have a lot of pins and scissors. And that's what you're gonna see me use in this process. So here goes, I'm just gonna start piecing this together. One thing to remember is that I am making this slip cover inside out. And so whenever I flip it right side out, because the chair is mirror image of each other, you know, right here, these arms are mirror images, these wings are mirror images, you're going to make it on the chair inside out, and then when you flip it, the one that you've pinned over here is gonna actually end up being over here. Since I have all of these panels made for this side, I can go ahead and just copy them. So instead of setting this on the chair for the other side, I'm actually just gonna take these pieces and I'm gonna use them as patterns to make pieces for that side. So it kind of takes the guesswork out of it. I still need to make an arm piece and a piece for the back, but I'll get to that.
Make sure when you're cutting out all these pieces to give yourself plenty of seam allowance. So don't just cut this exactly this size. You have to leave at least about an inch all the way around so that you have stuff to work with because not only do you have to put a seam allowance in, but every once in a while you'll find that you just didn't quite cut enough and so you just need to borrow from one side or the other. So give yourself plenty of room to work with. Okay, again, after I found the size for this inner arm piece, I copied it just by measuring and tracing using this as a pattern piece for the other side since it's the same. So now all I really had to find was the size for this piece, this piece, this, and this, and this, and then I could copy it over there. Now I'm going to show you the back, which is a little different. Because it has to fit over the chair, the goal with the back is to make two overlapping pieces that we can actually put shut with either a zipper or some ties or something to where it can open up and go over the chair. Yeah, that piece will be good. I'm gonna carry this just a little over halfway over so that when they overlap, overlap about that much and they could tie down the center. And now I just need an identical piece to this. So I can actually just take this and cut another one. I am going to cut it so that this is the end piece right here so that the seams already finish whenever they cross over. That's one advantage to drop cloth is it already has so many seams in place that if you work it right, you can utilize those seams. See how a nice finished seam is gonna be on top here? That's what we'll end up doing. But to do that, I'll actually have to put them opposite and face it like this, so that when we turn it right side out, that's what will happen. Okay, now after I cut a chair piece, this piece here, the seat piece, it's going to be time to start piecing all of these together. See this in here, it has a little pleat that kind of makes it cross over like this so that it fits the chair nicely. Whenever I put this together, I'm just gonna sew that same pleat right in. This probably doesn't look like much to you at this point. This is what we need to get started. Every part of this chair has a corresponding piece and now I'm going to put them together. I'm also going to take my pre-made piping and I'm going to sandwich that in on spots that have piping. So over here on the wing I see piping, I see it around the bottom, I see it around the arms. I'm copying that. I'm going to start by attaching this top front piece to the top back pieces and then I'm going to start working here on these arms. The goal with pinning this is to pin it exactly where your stitch line is going to go because this is the guide that you're going to have is your pins. So I'm going to pin all along where my original seam in the chair is. So the chair goes right here along the back. It doesn't go on top. They put it on the back so it's nice and hidden. And this will just be my sewing guide. And you're gonna see me stepping away from the camera a lot. Every time I make a line with my pins, I'm gonna go over to my machine and I'm gonna sew it so I can remove those pins and then keep on going with it. I don't want like five seams with pins and then their pins are falling out everywhere. I'm gonna make a little path of pins. I'm gonna go sew it, I'm gonna remove those pins and then I'll be working as I'm going. Now this back seam is curved, so I'm trying to curve my pins just like they did. Now 
Now you'll notice that I went ahead and pinned this side piece. That was because I was finding that I wanted to hold this over to get a feel for how it was. Now this part up here might look confusing and weird. I'm going to see how they put it together. So I can see that they attach this inside piece that I have down here to this inside front piece. And then this piece attached to this piece. I decided I'm going to finish this inside part of the wing so that this stays stationary, doesn't pull over before I start working on the other side. So I wanna make sure to keep this line where it's supposed to be. So this is a place where I am going to have to put piping because it's all around the wing and that is pretty and it looks tailored and nice. And I'm gonna sandwich in my piping. The way you're gonna be able to stop and start piping is just by sticking it out the back like this and then it'll be on the inside. I just wanna line this up directly with the original piping. Be sure to make your pin line very close and tight so this is your only guide when you go to your sewing machine. And I'm being sure not to pull too much from this side or I won't have enough material to attach it to the front piece there. And so I have to keep watching how much I'm pulling over. So I'm gonna attach this front back piece to this inside arm, keeping it really flat because this whole thing is gonna show. There's no forgiveness here. I'm gonna go and finish pinning this and then I'm gonna head over and sew this up. One of my favorite parts is trimming off excess fabric. Now I'm gonna work on this outside of this other wing. And I'm gonna be putting my piping in, of course. Okay, I've just gone and sewed the rest of these arms and I've trimmed everything. And now I'm going to just continue on just working around this chair. I'm gonna start over here on this arm. Make sure everything is lined up and sitting properly on your chair before you begin again. Thank you. 
I'm gonna go for the other arm now, and then I'm going to actually, after I sew all this, I'm gonna flip it right side out and see how everything's fitting before I move on to the next step because I don't wanna attach anything to these arm pieces until I'm 100% sure that they're fitting properly. If you could see, I'll show you this. See how this piping comes down to here and meets this piece? but in the arm, it hits this arm piece too. I'm going to put this arm piece here and I'm gonna sew along the piping so that it will do that. It will go from here into this piece. Okay, I went ahead and tried this on the chair just to see if I was happy about these lines here between the arms and up here before I moved on and I am happy with it so far. Uh, you can see that the piping extends down like this, like I wanted it to. I wanted to make sure that at this point everything was going okay and that it was fitting properly before I moved on. I'm gonna trim this because I need the line for this piece and these to line up. I need it to be right here because that's where it is on the original chair. I have this sewn down too far. See how this seams all the way down to here? Well, the chair lines up there, so I need to rip this up to that point. But I'm gonna actually even trim this because otherwise there's not gonna really be a way for me to know where to put it. I'm just gonna trim it. That looks just about perfect. You're gonna really appreciate this piece because when you're slip covering, there's so many confusing spots like around the arms and the wings. Not so with this piece. It's a rectangle. There's nothing mysterious about it. Now comes this little arm piece. I'm gonna start by adding in some piping starting at the very bottom because they have it there. I'm gonna sandwich my piping in against like this and leave the tail down here at the bottom. So what this is gonna attach to is this bottom piece. And once it gets up to here, it's gonna be attaching to this arm piece. So the key around this arm is to put the pins really tight up against the arm and up against the piping. And that's how you're going to get this really nice tight fit that actually goes perfectly around the arm. Of three pieces, you have this piece, the front section that we're adding, we have the side piece that you're attaching it to, and you have the piping. Pulling tightly here, taut the front piece and the outside piece together against the piping is going to make them come in and just fit it so snug that it's actually gonna mimic this perfect shape around. The more tight it fits in this area, the more professional this is gonna look because this is front and center. I'm just feeling it to see that my piping's lined up with the original piping. I'm going to cut this piping strip over here so I can move over to the other side, but I am definitely gonna extend it all the way down to here so it can meet this. It'll attach by way of this front piece. I'm going to attach the other side rectangle and front piece.
Okay, so I've completed sewing this arm and then I pinned this one the rest of the way. I sewed on my side panels and I just pinned in this little rectangle here in the bottom. This isn't super important because it is gonna be covered by a cushion, so don't worry too much about it being perfect. So before I head over to my machine, I wanna get this piece on too, so that way I can sew the rest of that. I can see in the original chair that I have to put a pleat in on both sides to make this rectangular piece wrap around the front. I wanna show you guys my solution for these pleats. Last time they didn't look near as nice as this, but the cushion does hide it, so it's okay. I was just trying to do a little more official this time. So I took my slip cover off and I put it back on the right way instead of inside out, and I just made the pleat nice that way. And I'm gonna go sew it before I sew this to this piece. Mm -hmm. Everything on the main slip cover is sewn except the bottom ruffle and piping, and then I have to sew the cushion. I sewed a really long ruffle. Now the rule of thumb for ruffles is one and a half times what you're sewing it to. So to have enough fabric to gather, you wanna measure around the perimeter of what you are sewing, whether it be a dress or a slip cover, and then multiply that by one and a half. So I have my piece, I've hemmed the bottom all the way around, and then I put a gathering stitch in the top. Now, if you're not too familiar with making ruffles, I have a video tutorial on that, and I will leave a link in the description, but I'm gonna blaze past that since I've already covered it. As I'm gonna pin this ruffle on all the way around, I'm gonna gather it a little more, and then I'm gonna pin it like such. I'm gonna put this, the piping down here like this, then the ruffle is gonna go on top of that like this. I'm gonna start this all the way in the back where my two ends in the back meet, but I'm just gonna show you for now what this is gonna look like. And I'm going to sew along the line of the piping on this side. So then whenever I turn it out, it'll look like that, only it'll be more gathered than that. And I want this piping to line up where, with where the piping was on this, and then the ruffle will go down past that. So I'm gonna work on that, and then I will sew it on, and we'll go from there. Okay, so I am finally to the last step on this slip covered chair, and that is going to be to slip cover this cushion. The way I did it was first I traced this chair onto my drop cloth, leaving around the edges just about an inch or so all the way around to work with for seam allowance. And then I cut a strip to go all the way around the middle. Now I didn't have a long enough piece so I had to cut two strips that I will sew together. This is gonna go around the middle and it's going to connect the top, the piece I just showed you, to the bottom, which the bottom is two overlapping pieces of the same shape. And the reason I did that is whenever I sew the middle to this top, these overlapping pieces can open and I can slip the cushion in. Now I'm just going to show you how I pin this all together.
So I've just finished pinning the top part of the cushion and I wanted to show you how I ended the piping. I made sure that it would end on the back of the chair. What I did is I just stuck the piping out like this and when I go to actually sew these pins, the raw edges won't show at all. It'll just be coming out and you'll just see the nice sewn lines. I made sure also that where I had to connect the end pieces of this middle strip, I had to connect them together. I made sure that happened on the back too so that on the front, all you'll see is a nice piping line with no starts and stops. So I'm gonna go ahead and sew this top part where I pinned, nicely fitted to this cushion, and then I'm going to work on the bottom overlapping pieces. I've sewn together the piping and bottom piece to the center piece, and if you see, this is the lines that I have, so nice lines around. Just take it real slow and go around where your pins are and you'll end up with the nice chair shape. Uh, as far as the piping, this is how it looks when they come out. So you just bring them out, trim them off, and then in the back of the chair, they'll just look overlapping like that. So I'm gonna keep this inside out and put it back on my chair or my cushion. I'm gonna show you what we're gonna do with the bottom, which will be envelope style case. I have two pieces that are the shape of the chair, but they're wider in the middle so that they can overlap. And on the outside edges, I've just put a little hem in it so that when they overlap, it'll be almost like a pillow, like an envelope style closure pillow. So I'm gonna pin them on the exact same way as I did the piping and center piece of the top part of the cushion. And then I'm gonna go sew it and serge everything. All right, so we are all done with this wing back chair. I just finished sewing together the bottom part, which I showed you how it overlaps. I put the cushion back in, put everything on and trim the strings, and this is the final product. A few more things to note. In my piping video, I talk about how to sew around piping, how you need to use a zipper foot to get really in nice and close. So the same applies when you're sewing pieces together that contain the piping. So make sure to always do that or you won't be able to get close enough to the piping so that it won't be floppy with your normal everyday presser foot. So make sure to use that zipper foot. And if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Just make sure the keys to slip covering is just to piece it together slowly and to fit the chair and make a line with your pins that hugs the chair. And with that strategy, you can make a slip cover for any furniture. You can make it for a couch, a chair that doesn't have the same shape, a bench, just anything like that. You are just fitting it to it and pinning it tightly. So thank you so much for watching. I hope this video was very helpful for you to start your first slip covering project. And please subscribe to my channel and visit my blog, farmhouseonboon.com to stay up to date with things going on in the farmhouse, food from scratch, natural living, and a handmade home.